other part of this project that you guys need help with. Um, but what I want to talk to you specifically about is two things. One is the literature review, as she mentioned, but then also you guys as scholars and what that means for the literature review. Um, and we'll go over that and hopefully what you can do with these projects that you, got, that you put together, the research that you do, is then take that and try to get that published. Or take that to your colleagues and say, you know, hey, I really think that this would be a good action to institute in our um, classrooms intervention. And I want you guys to read my, my research and see what you think. So in it, really, whenever you do research, you want to think about what can I do with this? Where can I take it? Can I take it to a conference presentation? Can I publish it? Can I just shop it around with my colleagues? So hopefully, as you work on this, you'll start thinking about that and what you can do with it. So I want to explain a little bit about my thesis project, because that's really why um, your instructor thought this would be so helpful to you. And it will also help illustrate what I want to talk about tonight. Um, how many of you have heard of Coney 2012? OK. So I was teaching comp classes at the time that Coney 2012 was released. And for those of you who don't know, it's a video that was released by the organization Invisible Children. And they um, claim to be a charitable organization that is attempting to stop a man named Joseph, um, Joseph Coney, I just totally slipped my mind, um, in Uganda, who is known to be a warlord. Um, and so what they hope to do with Coney 2012, which is essentially a video explaining why um, Coney is a bad guy, um, what they hope to do with this is raise worldwide awareness and then take this guy down through public action. And the video um, asks you to send in money to the organization. Well, when I actually did some research on Facebook, which is where I originally saw this, um, this organization is a little sketchy. They don't give all of their funding to these children, these um, children soldiers that Coney is supposed to have. Um, also, Coney may not actually still be in Uganda, and some other issues. So when I went into class one day, I asked, has anybody heard of Coney 2012? And three students told me they'd already sent in money to this organization. Um, and when I asked, well, what websites have you looked at? You know, did you, did you look at the Invisible Children website? Did you look at any of these blog posts that are tearing this video apart? They had no idea what I was talking about. So that really bothered me. First of all, it tells me that they didn't do the research. What it also tells me is that they're not making connections between all of these texts that they're seeing online. Even on Facebook, they're not clicking on blog posts that are connected to the video. They're only looking at the video. And they're only you know, looking at the things that their friends say are cool. So I wanted to encourage them to do additional research. But I also wanted them to understand that these texts talk to each other, that they are in a conversation, and that you can't remove a single text from that conversation and have it still make sense. The other interesting thing about this is this lovely picture right here. Um, that one of the major founders of Invisible Children had a very public meltdown about a week or so after the video was released and was running around in downtown San Diego naked and doing inappropriate things. Um, and so what happens now is whenever you do a Google search, this pops up every time you search for this video. So what that means is that now they've entered into that conversation. This picture is now in this conversation. And if you're going to talk about this, you might need to think about this. So that conversation is how we are going to approach this lit review. Also as part of my thesis project, um, I proposed this kind of approach that we're going to use for your lit reviews, which is to look at the network of texts that you're doing research with and looking at how they converse with each other. Because this is a conversation that you're looking at right here. You can't just look at a single text and get all of the information that you need. And even more importantly, these texts have read each other. You can tell from all of these lines, this is the text that I actually started with, the Daily What, um, on Coney 2012. But you can see that all of these other texts that it links also link each other. So it is a conversation. And so what I wanted to illustrate was that this is a network and that you should think about your research as a network, as a conversation. So also as part of my project, what I wanted to do was to analyze the information in the network. And to do so, I kind of highlighted each of these sources as far as what their relationship with the text was. So in this case, I was looking at texts that contradicted, texts that collaborated, um, or texts that corroborated, and then also texts that just informed. And you guys won't necessarily be doing that kind of work, but you will be looking at your sources in these networks and analyzing them. 
applying labels to them to make connections among them. Okay? So that's my work. Now let's talk about your work. So one of the questions that hopefully you've already answered was what is a scholar and do you consider yourself to be a scholar? Did you guys answer that already? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So tell me what your answers were. What is a scholar? Somebody who digs deep into research to find something. Absolutely. What else? <coughs> Professional. Okay. Someone who challenges themselves to learn on a regular basis. Somebody challenges who themselves to learn, just themselves? Or others. Or others on a regular basis. Okay. Anything else that you guys came up with that was significantly different than that? Okay, so then my, my next question is based on professional. Do you have to be a professional to be a scholar? No. Why not? Anybody can search for information. Anybody can search for information, but we do tend to think that professionals are scholars and that that's a select group that's hard to get into. Or, you know, why would you want to get into that group? That's the other way that people think about scholars. So do you consider yourself to be a scholar? Did you before you walked in this room? Raise your hand if you thought you were a scholar. One person thought they were a scholar. So why did you guys not think you were a scholar? Yeah, guys. <laughs> What's going on? Um, it, he gets it. It just never was presented to me. <laughs> it was never presented to you that way. Okay. How about the rest of you guys? You never thought about it? I have a question to them. Okay. Do your, since you're both all in schools, most of you full time, what in that environment has given you the idea that you're a scholar? I, I do what I'm studying. Right now I'm, I'm a teacher at an elementary school for special needs and I'm studying at the same time at the master's level. So. And have you thought about stuff you're learning in your class when you're in your classroom? I, I collaborate it every day almost, how I want to how I want to change some of the things that are happening through what I'm learning. It's really what's going on for me. How many of you at some point this week or last week asked yourself how you can help your students learn better? Congratulations, you're a scholar. Yep. How many asked yourselves if what you were doing was the right way to do it? Congratulations, you're a scholar. That's exactly what a scholar does is questions, seeks answers, identifies and interrogates the methods that they're using for doing something to discover whether it's working, or if it could work better, or if it's not working, how can you make it different? What other different method can you use? Um, testing ideas, recording evidence. You guys definitely have to record evidence. I've got a friend who's a teacher, and she's talking about all the kinds of paperwork you guys have to keep. So you record evidence, right? Um, making connections is an important one. So we're getting kind of harder and less common the more we go down this list, is what kind of connections do you make between what you hear in class, what you see in your classroom itself, and what you read in the research? What kind of connections are you putting together through that? Another part of that is identifying the gap in the conversation. What do I mean by that? Knowing that all situations are not the same. Is that kind of different? You're getting there. All situations are not the same, so, you, so what? You're trying to apply what you've learned from something from another skill to that particular subject. Or yes. So essentially, you've done the research. You you know looked at your class. You you've seen what you're doing in your school, and you notice that there's something that's not being addressed. Somebody is not talking about this issue that you think is important. That's the gap that you've identified in the conversation, and that's your opening into that conversation. So that's what you guys are looking for with this project. You are looking for the gap that's there that you can fill with your project, okay? Um, and then the last one is very important, participating in the conversation. You cannot be a scholar without participating in that conversation, partly because you participate just by reading research, but also when you guys create your projects and you link to other um, researchers and maybe you get it published or maybe you just it goes up on a school website, at that point it's entered the conversation. You are now a part of it, and that's a great thing. And it's really scary to think that other people might be reading your stuff, um, but it also allows you to grow, to get better at your career fields, 
and to have things to say that people will listen to. So we'll talk about how to do that. First, I want to read you um, a metaphor, and I'm going to read it to you because I want you to think about it as I read it. This is a, um, a metaphor called the unending conversation or the Burkean parlor metaphor. And it's called that because it was um, theorized by a literary critic called Kenneth Burke, who is a big <coughs> name in my discipline, but not so much maybe in your discipline. Um, but essentially what he was trying to do was come up with a way that would describe what scholarship is. And that's what this metaphor is about. So as, you, as I read this to you, I want you to think about you as being in this situation, and then think about scholarship as this metaphor, okay? Imagine that you enter a parlor. You come late. When you arrive, others have long preceded you, and they are engaged in a heated discussion. A discussion too heated for them to pause and tell you exactly what it's about. In fact, the discussion had already begun long before any of them got there, so that no one present is qualified to retrace for you all the steps that had gone before. You listen for a while until you decide that you have caught the tenor of the argument. Then you put your oar in. Then you put in your oar. Someone answers, you answer him, another comes to your defense, another aligns himself against you to either the embarrassment or gratification of your opponent, depending upon the quality of your ally's assistance. However, the discretion is interminable. The hour grows late, you must depart. And you do depart, with the discussion still vigorously in progress. And essentially what they want you to get from this, what I want you to get from this, is that this is a discussion that is ongoing. It was ongoing before you got here, before you came into this room. People are already talking about special education. They're already talking about the best way to teach something. So there's no way that Somebody can explain to you everything that's gone before because there's so much. But what you can do is come in, listen for a bit, get an idea of what's being said and what's not being said, and then contribute your own thoughts. And eventually, you know, you go away to another discussion, but you leave behind these thoughts that somebody else picks up. That is the conversation that we want you to feel like you are a part of. Okay? Okay. So having talked about what a scholar is, um, we now want to talk about literature reviews and how a literature review is really an expression of this conversation that we're talking about. And I'm assuming that uh, Kevin talked a little bit about literature review, did he, at all? Yeah. It's a, it's a major part of any academic article that you're going to read, for the most part. Um, introduction usually comes first, as you guys, I'm sure, know. Um, that can include many different parts. It could be a, it could include a narrative. It could include your thesis statement or your main claim. It could include your research questions. It could include a lot of things. The next part is your literature review. Um, the next part is going to be your data set or your study or your research analysis. That's going to be all the data that you guys collect. And then your methodology, how you um, get that data, the results that you get, and then your discussion explaining those results. And then obviously your conclusion. So your literature review is one of the major sections of your paper. And it's really important because what it tells your audience is you've done the research, you've entered the conversation, you know what's being said, and you know what's not being said. So you're using the literature review to communicate that to your audience and to back up what you want to argue. I'm going to demonstrate in my literature review that this conversation is not being had, and I think we should have it. Therefore, this is the intervention I'm suggesting to enter that conversation, okay? So essentially, the purpose of a literature review is to discuss literature in a very specific subject. Because as we know, there is a ton of literature out there, and you cannot possibly read all of it. So you want to narrow down your topic and focus on the research in that area. And then you want to summarize and synthesize it. Synthesize is very important. Summary is easy to do. Um, you know, here's what the article says. Bam, done. But the synthesis part is really important because it shows that you're actually using that research to come up with your argument. That you are saying, you know, this is what the art article is saying, but it's problematic because it doesn't do these things. Or its sample size is too small to really prove that this is the case. So synthesizing also means that you're looking at other research in that conversation and putting it together. Okay. So it is both a snapshot of the scholarly discussion, 
in the sense that we're looking at a very small piece of that discussion, and it is a response to it. So you are responding to the discussion by saying, this is what the literature is saying, and I'm going to use this to back up my argument. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay. All right, so let's talk first about what it shouldn't do. Um, as a tutor in the Graduate Student Support Center and as a teacher of composition students, I have seen all of these. And hopefully you will not do any of them. I'm sure you won't do any of them. You look like a good group. Okay, so bad literature reviews or literature reviews that are not achieving their purpose only summarize the information. It's a book report. Your instructors can read those articles. They don't need you to only summarize. They need you to, to take that summary and do something with it. So make sure you don't just summarize, you synthesize. Um, or you might focus too much on summary. You might tell us the entire article, which isn't really necessary. What you might need to do is tell us the important part of the article that relates to your study. Okay? Um, doesn't relate the literature back to the purpose of the paper. So if you are suggesting a specific action, and you tell us all about this article that's about something that we have no idea what the connection is, the function of your lit review isn't working. You need to make us understand why that's relevant to your argument. Okay? Um, doesn't make connections. We've talked about the importance of that. Um, tells us why, if the reader liked it or not. You know, I will be very happy if you like all the articles that you read. I will not be happy if you don't like them, but sometimes that happens with scholarly research. But you don't have to put that in your lit review. Okay? And the other thing is where you found the, re the um, research. If you found it in a particular database, that's not information necessarily that you need to include. Um, it will be in your work cited page or references page. Um, so you don't need to include that in the lit review. And I only include this, I don't think everybody's gonna do this, but I've seen it. So any other questions about what you shouldn't do in a lit review? Okay. So then what should it do? Um, the important thing here is that you are indicating the theories in your field that are going to back up what you're arguing, okay? And why it's relevant. So this theory supports my argument and it's necessary for me to explain this to you, my audience, because this is what I'm using to back up my argument. Um, that may include the history and relevance of the, art of the um, argument. That's going to depend on what it is you're trying to argue as far as history. It may be that you only need to focus on current information, so history won't be necessary, but relevance will always be necessary. Okay. Um, make connections is crucial, and you also want to identify the gap that we talked about that you're filling. So what have you noticed has not been addressed? Because that, again, is your entry port point into that conversation, and you want to let your audience know what that is. Any questions about this? Yes. So what if you spend all your time with the literature review and you don't find a gap? Well, it's possible that um, it won't be a clear gap, but you can discuss it with somebody else and talk through. Um, essentially, you don't want to repeat stuff that you're already reading about, because what's the point of doing that? Right. So it may be that the gap isn't there, but maybe there's a different way of doing something that already exists that you think would be better. That in itself is a gap. Okay. I mean, it's with the way scholarship is, it won't necessarily be a glaring sign that says, oh, we're not talking about this, because scholarship talks about everything. Um, but think in terms of, is there a better way to do something? Is there a different way to do something? Okay? With Good a different, different population mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometimes yes. you all, for example, maybe everything is with uh, music. You're looking at something and all this intervention is used as in the music. So you're a PE person and you take that into a new population. You take something from Jed in, Ed into a new population. Yeah, you can switch mm -hmm. kind of disciplines or classes or genders or races um, if you think that would work in another group. That's another way to do that. Okay. But if, if I'm incorrect, make sure you stand me correct. No, no, no. You're, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> okay. And other questions about what the lit review should do. Okay. So the way that we are going to have you construct a literature review is going to use these five steps. Um, the first, research, Kevin's already covered in detail. Um, you know where to find stuff, and you, you know to narrow down your topic. Um, and you may end up finding research that you don't use. That's fine. 
it helps you get an idea of how to narrow down your field and where you want to focus and where you don't. So don't worry about that. If you find research that you don't think you're going to use, at least it gives you ideas. The second part is to identify the connections between that research or among that research, um, which we will talk about more next week is going to be how, when we really focus on that. And along with that, I'll be illustrating that network in kind of an image map like I showed you earlier. And I'll show you another example of that in a bit. And then after you've identified and illustrated, you're going to start analyzing those connections. That could be um, looking at things in, in many different ways. Specifically, what we want you to look at is what is the problem? What are the causes of the problem that the literature is talking about? And then what solutions is the literature suggesting to that problem? And based on those, what action have you chosen and why? Why is the action that you've chosen the best one? Um, it may be because the majority of the literature says that it's the best one. Um, it may be because nobody's talking about that and you think it'd be interesting to see. You just have to provide a justification for why that is. Um, and then finally, writing the lit review, which hopefully you'll feel more comfortable by the time we get there um, because we're going to organize it in much the same way that we're talking about it. Okay? And I'm going to go through these steps as well and give you more information. So um, Sue, I believe, is going to post this or has posted this already, the research um, matrix. Yes, and I also brought, just for the heck of it, I brought hard copies okay. so that they can have, so you can keep talking and I'll pass okay. it out. So this is to help you as you guys are going through your research to kind of keep track of it because you may end up with 10 to 20 research articles and it's really hard to remember what's in each one. So this matrix is designed to help you pick out the important information. So um, article information, the main claim or argument that they're making the problem that they suggest or the causes of the problem, um, the solutions that they suggest, it may be more than one. And then you can reflect on this source. And you can use this space to do many things. You may look to, at the outcomes of the research. Maybe the outcomes were not successful. Um, think about if you've already read something that you know is connected to this, um, make a note on that so it's easier to find later. If maybe a source cites one of your other authors, mention that too, because that'll help you when you have to go through and make those connections. So your research matrix will be due when? The seventh? Um, just a minute, I have that also. <laughs> Do you want me to hand out the revised um, calendar? Oh yeah, you might be able to refer to it better that way. Okay. I believe that. <laughs> this is a revised schedule taken out of the um, syllabus so that you can see how we're going from the old to the new. I left the old in there, crossed it out so you can see how it relates. You guys don't have to do, a, to do an annotated bibliography, you should be thrilled. Yes. Oh, we are. <laughs> well, it's hard, and I have, I realize it's the end of the day, but I'm telling you, I want to applaud after every slide. <laughs> I'm so excited. It might be a little distracting. Please say applause at the end. <laughs> well, the reason is, I'm so excited that they're going to have a better uh, experience. I'm just so excited I about that. I certainly hope this is a better experience. It will be. Okay, I so you, it already is. The research matrix will be due on February 14th. Um, so keep working on this as you're going, as you're researching, just, you know, enter in a couple at a time. You don't have to fill out the whole thing all at once. But use that to kind of gather your information. Okay, so then the next step that we will do, we'll talk about next week, is identifying the connections and mapping them. So essentially what you're looking for is what kind of problems are the articles suggesting, what kind of solutions are they suggesting. Um, you're going to look for the connections between the sources. So any sources that sit, discuss the same cause of the problem are connected. Any sources that discuss the same solution are connected. Any sources that reference each other, you want to mark that connection down as well. So that map will help you to do that. So this is kind of an example of what it might look like. Um, I totally made this up. But you know these connections might be that they cite each other. Um, and they're not color-coded in this example for anything, but in this next one they are. So maybe this is an example of my solution map. And so this would show that the majority of the articles use solution one.
So I definitely, I definitely might want to include that in my lit review because it's a common solution. Um, the second most popular would be solution two. Four of the articles discuss that. So that might be the second thing that you discuss, but maybe in less detail. So you want to make those connections. Why is it helpful to have a map here? Why are we making you make a map? Well, we certainly hope it's helpful, but why is it helpful? You can see the weight. Categorizing. Yeah. Categorizing, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can see all of it on one screen, mm -hmm. so you can see the connections. You can see weight. Article 9 and Article 5 probably don't have control. Exactly. There are only two of the, you know, only two people discuss this particular solution. You have limited space in your lit review. Maybe you don't need to talk about those at all. And this one out here, you know, these two are connected to nothing. What does that mean? Is that, does that mean maybe you don't need to include them? Those are the kinds of things you can help, the, this map can help you think about. So I think we're going to have you end up making a map for solutions and a map for problems. So that can help you visualize these. It also lets you see the conversation. Who's talking about each other? Because a, a good way to find sources, which Kevin probably mentioned, is to look at somebody's work cited. So if you do it that way and you start finding your sources, you're going to find that these people have read each other's papers. So they already know what the other person is saying, and you are entering that conversation, and this helps you visualize that. Okay? Questions about the, the image maps? Um, the, the program I use for this, um, I forget the name of it. It's a free source program, um, and I will get that. I will either tell you guys about that next week, or we'll put it up on Blackboard or something. So you can use a free software program. You can use a different program than this. You can handwrite it, draw it on construction paper, whatever works for you to keep you to help you keep track of it and to visualize it. Um, I think we're okay with. What's the name of the? Um, she just asked me that. I'm not sure oh, I that I remember it. Um, I've got That's it on okay. my desktop. In just the curious. Office. Yeah. I think I just googled mind mapping software and pulled up a free one. So play around with a couple, see which one you're most comfortable with, and use whatever works for you. Okay, but we'll let you know which one this was. Any other questions about the maps? Yes. So it says that the mapping matrix is due the 14th, so we have to have all of our articles by then, basically. Mm -hmm. Essentially, yes. Um, if you want to add one later, I think that that would be doable, but you want to have the majority of them in order to make the connections and do the mapping. This is kind of a fast process, so as much as you can get done. The mapping, I imagine, will be pretty easy. It's the matrix and filling that out that's going to take a lot of the time. That actually, I believe, will help help them to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the matrix system. should help you with this because you will literally have a column of solutions and a column of problems. So the earlier the matrix is done, the easier the mapping will be. Mm -hmm. Yes? I don't understand what you mean by the problems. So, um, Give me an example of something that you guys are thinking about writing your paper on or doing your project on. Say that again. Okay, why do you need strategies on maps? What's the problem that you see there? They don't know it. Kids don't know math. That's a problem. The articles will probably suggest various different causes of that problem. So maybe they didn't get enough instruction earlier on in their schooling. So you might put that down in your, on your matrix on the problem section. Um, maybe the students have anxiety about math and they can't learn. That would be a cause of the problem that you'd want to put down. So that's essentially what you're looking for is I, you need, first need to identify what the problem is and then you're going to be looking for solutions to that problem. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add to that? No. I, I realize that it is a lot to do, but compared to the whole task of the lit review, we're cutting out quite a bit. The reason we're doing it this, in the old, you would actually do this annotated bibliography, spend a lot of time doing that annotation, then you'd turn right around and have to synthesize it and create a whole new product. In <coughs> this way, I'm asking you to really focus on the article, so I'm giving you more time to read and, and imagine the things you want to think about using the matrix and then you'll do this visual mapping. It, we're cutting out quite a bit. Plus, I'm extending the due date. And so also think about, what, time. think about what Kevin said about reading um, the sections of a scholarly article. Mm -hmm. Because if you read the discussion section and the conclusion, you're going to get a big idea of what they're arguing and what the results of their data looked like and how it can be helpful to you. 
So you don't necessarily have to read some of this article in order to get that. Start with the introduction, skim through it, skip to the end, find out the ending. That's a great way to do it, and it also will take you hopefully less time. Right. So, any other questions about that? Yeah, let's go back to where I was. Okay. So then the following week, um, what we'll talk about is analyzing those connections, looking for commonalities. So the same things that you mapped, you're going to be looking for because that's going to tell you maybe I need to talk about that. Or, you know, how, does that, how is that relevant to my problem or how am I addressing that in my um, action that I'm suggesting? So those are going to be things to think about. It may be that, like you, we pointed out on the other maps, some of them don't seem connected or they're not mentioned enough, so maybe you can exclude them. You don't need to talk about them, you won't need to, to mention them unless they're relevant to what you're talking about. So that's where you're going to start editing your information. Um, and then again, you want to identify the gaps that are there. So they suggest these three ways to fix this problem, but I can think of a fourth way. So that's my gap. Or you know, they suggest using this in the math and English classroom, but I want to try it in social studies. I know nothing about school today, so I have no idea what you guys teach. Just bear with me. Um, so think about those. Those are the gaps that you're looking for. Okay. And then the final one will be writing it. Um, and you're going to write your lit review in the same way you've been researching it. So you're going to start with your problem. You're going to identify what the research says about the problem. You may discuss it and say that you think this is a particular cause of the problem that you've ident identified. It's OK to identify in the lit review which one you agree with or which one you think has the most um, relevance to your work. You'll then do a section on your solutions. You can discuss multiple solutions and then point out why those won't work, potentially, um, or why they might work. It's up to you. Um, and then the third part will be explaining the action that you chose and why. So because you think this is the cause of the problem and you think this guy is right about his solution, you've chosen this action, is how that paragraph or those paragraphs might look. Okay. And then another thing you want to do with your lit review, um, you may do this all throughout the lit review, is if you have any key terms that you want to define in specific ways or you think your audience might not be familiar with, you want to make sure that your lit review does that as well. So Us Using the literature. Exactly. So we're not talking about using Webster's Dictionary or anything like that, but you know, maybe there's a, I can't think of a term. That well, when, if Smith is talking about uh, uh, inclusion, there you go. What does Smith say inclusion is? And because are inclusion you can mean very different things depending on which theorist is talking about it. So right. you want to be specific on how you are defining it because that could affect your action. Right. Your I'm you say, so you have to actually commit to identifying with one of these researchers on how you are going to refer to the term. Exactly. And some of the things that you wouldn't think need to be defined, when you start using them in research, it can mean very different things. So start looking for those key terms that you might need to address and define. Okay. Any other any questions on writing it? As we said, we'll go in way more detail during that week, but this gives you an overview, especially because we won't meet for the next two class periods. Any questions about any part of this? We can make the outline available on Blackboard, Sue? Uh, yes. If it isn't already? Uh, the one that you sent me today? Well, we'll get that one over there, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which outline? Um, the outline for the lit review. And for the paper? Uh, I mean, is uh, this PowerPoint going to be available? The, yes, I thought yes. I, I haven't actually put my old. I think that this Thursday we have to look at what I have on there, and okay. we may have to eliminate it, and I have may have to review. We will get all this, the PowerPoint yeah. and outlines yeah. and stuff up. This, yeah. This week. By yeah, Thursday. in plenty of time. Okay. In plenty of time. <coughs> so then, I just want to close with this: that after you do your project, this is you. You have now entered that conversation. Hopefully you will find what you're doing so useful that you can get it published or that you can take it to your school and implement it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you are in that conversation. And I want you to think about that as you're doing your research, is entering that conversation and being a scholar because that's what you guys are. Okay? Thank that you. That is amazing. That is amazing. Thank you. And uh, Aaron is going to be... Uh, doing quite a bit with us the next few weeks. 
and that is all listed there on the revised schedule. Um, just so you know, she's also a student currently. She's leaving a class to come over and do this for us. I'm only auditing it, so it's fine. Yeah, well, she's still <laughs> taking the class. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm very excited because, unfortunately, but fortunately, uh, the online schedule, which has already been set, I set for the old format. Because, I mean, you really didn't need to meet when we were doing annotated bibliography, right? But being the uh, uh, explorer that Erin is, um, she is going to be willing to create some online uh, instruction for you. And it will be my first time doing so, so be forgiving. Well, they will because I, I already eliminated one of mine today from last <laughs> semester. I just took it right out of there. Uh, but, but basically, she's going to work on that and post it on Monday. Um, it is going to take her a couple of days. We, and, uh, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to hopefully help her with it. But anyway, and then what, how that is going to work was, did we say Monday? What day did we say? We said Monday. It'll be up on Monday. And It'll be up on Monday. Monday. So that will give you an opportunity to look at it Monday evening, her, her instruction, or Tuesday early morning or whatever. You figure out when you want to, you know, watch that. Here's the thing. You're not required, but you may uh, tune in to Google Hangout on Tuesday night. And she is going to join us. She's been very sweet joining us because that's two more hours of her time. So that is one of the things that I want to make sure I have uh, and can work out with them. Um, you're welcome to stay, but you don't have to. Today, for the rest yeah, of it? for the rest I'll of it. Did you want to take some questions? Yeah, if there are any. Were there any other questions? So what are we supposed to watch on Monday? Uh, on Monday, next week is an online class. Yes. And she is going to post some instruction on that first step. It'll be the on, mapping um, step. Identifying and mapping. I'll do a, a video on that. So between now and next Monday, what will you be doing? Finding, Finding literature. your literature and filling in your matrix. Okay. And then Monday, she's going to give you the instruction to start mapping. It doesn't have to be finished, but next week you will be working on that mapping. So what I want to do is, this has been great. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Do you want someone to put my contact information up there? If, they, if you guys have any questions, you can oh, email perfect. me or call me, um, and I'll give my information to Sue. Yeah, that's she another thing. She's on campus here in the yeah. rage office downstairs on the first floor in the wing. And you're there every day? Every day, 8 to 5. So I know it's not convenient necessarily for you guys to come to campus, but you can email <coughs> me or call me, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So, and she does. She answers that phone. I called you how many times a day? Four. I think it was four, yeah. <laughs> and she answered every time. I will admit that the last time she said, I'll see you later. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to clarify how next week will look. All right? So um, let's pull up Blackboard for you. at your discretion the next two weeks. So uh, at first I was kind of troubled because I thought, oh no, we have this wonderful instruction and we won't be in class. And then I had a second thought after that and I thought, wait a minute, this is probably going to work out better because you'll get the instruction, you'll be able to go back to it as many times as you need to, plus you can actually sign on to uh, Google Hangout, if you so choose, and uh, when you do that, 
uh, you'll be able to interact and ask questions. Plus, you'll have all that extra time because you won't be driving to campus and sitting in class and all those, driving down I-25. Uh, but anyway, so this is next week. And you'll still have your reading and you'll still have discussion board. Uh, but I am going to ask you to start keeping track of your work. And I will show that to you when I'm finished explaining how you're going to do that. The visual map and matrix is due on Friday the 14th, which I've already told you. Um, you do have the first part of your paper due, and it will be right here where you will click in and put that, put it on here by Friday midnight. This is next Friday, a week from Friday. This is next week. This is week four. We're in week three. That's the demographic part, right? Yes, yes. I have uh, two things here. I have the paper example that I showed you last week. I have the describing wheel that we used. So this is an example, and then here's the assignment link, and the rubric is on there. So then there's your discussion, and what will happen on Monday sometime, and be, please bear with us. I cannot give you... Uh, how do I want to put it? I cannot give you a perspective in to how much better this is because you did not experience the other way. Although Mike, your wife, just took this course, she'll be able to explain to you that you're lucky stars that you're in this semester. Now, <laughs> uh, you might be able to say already that you see some things that are better. It is a million times better. And it's only because it, I, it's not my specialty area. <laughs> And uh, I've been doing the best I can, but uh, God intervened and brought Asians into my life. And so I do care, I really do care about my students, and I want it to be a better. You know, when this all opened up, I could have just said, and Dr. Checo will, will agree with this, I don't have time to make these changes right now. But I'm doing it because I want you to have part in that conversation. I'm so excited about it. And it's already empowered me. Just listening to this has empowered me as a scholar myself. So um, even though right now this is, seems like a lot, it is so much better. And uh, Monday, sometime, that instruction will be on here. And Tuesday, Google Hangouts will be available. Now, that's the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm watching the time. Um, it's possible when I call your name that you may have sent your Gmail to me and I haven't gotten it. It's possible I overlooked it. it you may have sent it to me correctly, but I could have overlooked it. For example, David sent me his, but he sent it to a place that I wasn't looking for, it, so you know me, I missed it. So I just want to make sure I have them if you want. It's totally optional. This is not a requirement. Um, Chong, I don't have yours. Do you want me to get it? I emailed you. Did you? Yes. Okay, I will look then. The, but I emailed you with that, um, the question for action research. It's the bottom. It's at the bottom? Yes. I'll go back in and Do pick it up. Can... Nope, I can go back okay. in and pick that up. Uh, it's not surprising the number of emails I get to a day that I miss that. Sometimes I read emails on my phone, and then I really miss things that are at the bottom. Uh, let's see. Derek? Yeah, I'll email you. Okay. Yours is coming? Yes. Uh, it's really great if you email it to me because I can just cut and paste it in. Richard isn't here tonight. Christy? Oh, oh yeah. Have to have has to be, have a Gmail account. It has to be a Gmail account. If you need help with that, let me know. Okay. Well, we city schools. No, it has to be. You actually have to go into Google and create it. If you need help, let me know. Um, uh, Davis is going to give it to. That's that's it. I have everyone else's. Okay. <coughs> So, now this is how this is going to work. I, I need to tell you this because um, um, there will be 
too many of you if you all want to come on at the same time. So, under week four, somewhere, where did I put it? Now I don't remember where I put it. Shoot. I put a lot of things out there today, but I don't remember where I put this. I'll have to look for it, and, and uh, I'll link it to the assignment sheet. But basically, this is what we're going to do. Um, A through Kreider, or it might have been Michael. I'll have to find out where I counted, and it might be through you, Michael. I can't remember. I will find it somewhere. It's on my sheet somewhere. You will be getting on Google from 5 to 6. And then uh, after that, beginning... It's either with Michael or Ann, and we'll, I'll figure that out. Um, the rest of you, no, I think it's before Michael, because I realized I have Paula's at the end, and she's a Hoffman. You actually announced it uh, on... I did announcement? Yes. yes. Oh, that's yes. where it is. It's on the announcement. Yeah, there's a, I knew I put it somewhere, and I was like, where in the heck did I put Google it? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's what I needed. Um... In week four? It's in, it's in week four? Under four years success. Okay, all right. So, because once you get ten people in, and, and I'm not including, um, I don't know, uh, Dr. Checo, did you want to come on or not? It's totally up to you. It's what, Tuesday? Yeah, okay. That's okay. Well, and you know what? That's the other thing. If we realize that we need more Google Hangout, I can add it for you. I couldn't add it while I'm teaching. But I could add another hour if I needed to help with under, you know, understanding. So this is the next question then. Once we, we've got that figured out, I wanted to know who would help students that have never been on Google Hangout. Here is my, here's my suggestion. The very first time you've, not, you've been on, it's sometimes easier to be with someone who has gone on before. You don't have to, but sometimes it is easier. I'm going to, it won't look the same when I show it to you. Um, it won't look the same when I show it to you because, uh, first of all, uh, Jerry Concilia created a tutorial for me about this, and what happened is Google changes their format like every six weeks. So it made the tutorial null and void. But basically, you go on to Google Plus, and I'm going to pull it up. You can call me if you want. I know. Okay. What? Oh, I can call you? Great. Thank you so much. camera, and I don't know if there's voice, but... Oh, there might, might or might not be. Here's the thing. The very first time you do it, uh, it asks you to do different things. So it's not exactly the same, but, whoops, excuse me. That's my age, by the way. No. <laughs> yeah, like 100 years ago. <laughs> oh, no. Do we have to use Chrome? Oh, Okay. I can't wait. All right, okay. Oh, I hope I didn't forget my... But I am going to try with my ear for the regular internet. I just try to try with that. I may not remember my... Oh, thanks. Thank you. Well, duh. I'm just so tired. Okay, like all of you are, I know. Okay, so what happens is you go to, uh, 
looks different than what I'm used to getting. Okay. Thank you. Up on the right side, do you see the plus two? And then I come in here and I'm looking for my class, which is right here. I've already added you all in. And then I am going to, I don't see you. What? No, I, it will call everyone. But I don't see the, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it the way I usually do. right up. And what will happen is it will show up down here. I'll hit the camera and it's going to start calling you. For some reason not. Oh, yeah. Well, fortunately, they uh, the ones in the library, they added that for folks. Because we had a couple of people try this last semester and they didn't have the right, they wouldn't let the plug-in through, but uh, the library has been kind enough to help us with that. So if you wanted to come to the library to do this, you could. It would work here, but you might want earphones because there will be verifying installation. Okay, I don't know why it's not making... Um, I wish it, oh, no, looks like everyone has left, <laughs> um, can you join, will it let you, you might have to install the plug-in. Well, it usually will tell me to Maybe it's muted down here. I'm not sure why it isn't uh, letting us hear it.
So if you want, if you have a question about the document, or we want to look at a document, or your data, or whatever, we can do that. So next Tuesday, when Aaron is with us, if you are you working on your map yet, you don't have to. But if you're working on your map yet, you could actually pull your map up if you had questions about it. So, see, oh great, she's. So look what. Um, fun thing. Let's see. Melanie, show your your face. I just want to give show them my fun. Come on. It's so fun. You can do all these fun things to each other. Huh. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, when everybody's on here, you can actually have quite a bit of fun with them. You can give them hats or horns or um, there's uh, sounds that you can use. There's all kinds of fun things you can do. But anyway, does everyone understand uh, what we're looking at for next week? Do you yes. see me on there? What? Do you see that I'm on there? I show on mine I'm there, but it doesn't show me. Um, no. I have an answer on here, too, but it doesn't show. Does it say join? Does it say join? You should see the screen if it joins. Okay. Do you? Or do you have a, a user for Daniel? Oh, okay. I, I added her, but she may have to read, confirm. she may have to confirm or join me. Oh, that's cute. Um, here, let me look. I think I saw the prompt. Yeah, where did it go? That's a chat, though. Your name isn't up here, so that tells me you're not here. But, um, There's a screenshot. Yeah, I saw that. That's cute. Um, the other thing is what I'll do, Paula, mm -hmm. that night I will have my phone. I have a landline, and I have my cell phone. So sometimes students have to call me and ask me um, a question on how to get help, or you know, I might be able to. We can try. And I'll keep playing with it too. Yeah, and we can try it again. But anyway, this is it. It's been a great evening. I mm -hmm. hope you've learned as much as I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, good luck on your research. Did you have anything else to add, Dr. Checo? I was um, going to let them know about a, an amazing application that we can send out. I just discovered it, but it's, um, I should probably spell it. it. It's called Mendeley Desktop, but basically what it does, if you have your research articles, it's a free application, so you get it, go on Google and, and access it. You can store, save all of your articles in, in folders, but basically how I'm using it, I have these articles all over my desktop, and so what I do is I open this up and I can drag and drop all of my research articles and it populates the fields by putting in an APA style. You have to select which style, oh, wow. you want, you know, if I can show it to you really quickly, you can log out of mine, but if you get a chance, and we can set it out to you in a link. But I'm telling you, it's saving my life. So I can, it searches my computer desktop, and I can go in and I can organize all of my research articles, and you can also put the abstract in. So if you want to just get that information, save it in one file, and it creates this list for you. It's amazing. So I don't know if she's still on here. What's happening? We were just logging out.
she was logging in. Okay, let me just, sh I'll just show you so you can at least look at the name of it. And just uh, try it. I can help you at some point. But oh my goodness, it's a lifesaver. And I cannot believe it's free. Uh, so here it is. And let me see if I can just show you my library. You might have to have, I, I don't know, I guess it doesn't really matter which um, email you have. The beauty of it too, you can share uh, research articles, so put little notes on them and send them to one another. Look at, so look at how this organizes your information. I'm not getting, I, I think I have to actually download it here onto this computer. But basically what it does, so you could create your folders of your research. And let me see if, should, this is what it will look like when you first start it to create a folder. And so for example, if I had over here an article on co-teaching, I just drag and drop it and it populates all those fields for me. It fills it all in, it is incredible. So I'll show you what it fills in. Um, So you can kind of see when it's already filled in. So create your own library. I'm just showing the Mendeley if they want to see that. So um, thank you. It, it, it is amazing. It's a free, it, it's just incredible that it's free for one thing. So, okay, yeah, I, I would have to download it here, but let me just show you the field. Nothing's free, is it, Dr. Checko? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Let's see. Um, and it's at, so you, for the tags, for example, you know how you do your keywords? If you're looking up keyword searches. So like I'm, I'm actually doing something with co-teaching. So what I do is I put co-teaching in every article that's related to co-teaching. So I can then go up somewhere and there's, there's a certain, I can type in co-teaching and it gives me all my articles related to that particular subject content area. But the beauty is if I can find, if I can show you, but again, this is not, uh, I wanna show you what the fields look like because you will want to copy and paste those abstracts. Um, you're gonna wanna do that. Oh, what a good idea. And yeah, it's, let's see, oh, let's show me. Let me so that you can, on that would be easy for you if you started you a document and just copied yes. and pasted those. Yes. I haven't thought about that. So here's what they look like. This is what I'm looking for. So, and for whatever reason, abstract is not showing up. But basically, again, you have an article sitting out here on your desktop, you drag it in, and it populates all of this for you. Now, the other cool feature, so and there's, there is a way that you can add abstracts. So I just copy and paste my abstract over here in one of the fields. So it's great. The other neat piece of information, I love this. So if there's different annotations, uh, let me see, like this one right here, if it just has a little green dot, and I know I'm going through this quickly, but this one has a green dot there. So it means I don't have the actual article. If you notice here, just like on um, when you're going Vesco. through the, yeah, Vesco or yeah. Eric, it shows you as, uh, there's a PDF file attached mm -hmm. to it, right? So even if I find an article title and I can put it in, you know, I add it, so I, you can add a document or whatever up there. And if I go out here and if I copy and paste the title of this article, I couldn't find it, but I copy and paste the title of this article, it will search the internet and try and find the PDF file for you. Oh, wow. I know, it, I'm, I'm so excited as you can tell. But the other beauty of it is if I wanna find even more on co-teaching, let's see if this will do it. This will also search, uh, yes, this will also search the internet for other articles that I might not have already in my search, already in my library and find even other articles related to co-teaching. So, and this is free. So, but you have to download it on your desktop. So, I know, isn't this awesome? So tonight, I hope it's been worth your while. Oh yeah. <laughs> Kiss your brain. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> We're good. We're so good. <laughs> <laughs> right here.